Right, out on the course with Danny Boy over here. He's just getting a few balls from the bag. We've got GC Quad. We're going to show you if we can take any of these feelings that we're practicing out onto a golf course. What numbers we get when we're trying to hit actually functional shots. And I think this is a great message for anyone getting custom fit, anyone thinking about getting clubs and having lessons because we don't always make the same swing. I'll show you what I mean. So what I want you to do to start, Dan, is it two balls that are different numbers so we can distinguish where they end? Yeah. I want you to hit an up bomb ball and then I want you to hit your I'm going to find fairway low shot. Let's see the difference in the numbers, what that equates to when there's roll involved. Yeah. Let's see what difference that's actually making. Okay. You choose which way round you want to do it. Yeah, that's fine. So a zero, zero with a dot with on a it. Bit of a scuff on it. So which one's going to be which? So the scuffy one's going to be the high ball. Is that the first one? The first one. So high ball to start. High ball to start. And we're not as warm as we could be, so we can work that into the numbers as well if we hit a few subjects how busy it is out here. We're just jumping in, basically. Because obviously the high ball in theory goes longer, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does, yeah. But that's launch monitor do. longer. On there it will tell you that it will go longer. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see the difference with a dewy, uphill, actual On rollout stuff. fairway stuff. Yeah. So high ball to start. Just moving it into the hitting area as you were everyone. Pretty good strike, just slightly out to the right. What numbers are you getting on that one? That's saying that's gone 287. So that was a, if we're going to get that on here, 287, 287. with 1.7 spin. spin. So, and it did go high as in it was a yeah. high launch, you just caught it off the top with a low spin. What's really interesting there though, I mean bearing in mind, I've not really, we've not hit any balls, have we? I've just hit a couple of shots for a two. 111 already. Right out the bat. Wow. That is good. How'd you hit that one? Like they're both perfect shots and what I would go to on the golf course yeah, if you know what I mean. That one's 2-3 two, spinner. 2-3, <laughs> uh, so I get it. I got it slightly higher in the face yeah. than I would normally let's say in some situation but look at that 109 club head speed so I've dropped 2 mile an hour. Yeah. I'm spinning it 6,000 revs more. Okay, no 600. Oh, 600 revs more and my carry distance at 246. Let's see where those two end up. I'm going to do two now. That's 40 yards. Yes, yeah, massive. So you're going to hit yellow ball. Well, I kind of only have one swing at the moment. I'm not like you. I don't have two, but I'm going to. So I'm going to go bigger shoulder turn, yellow, trying to hit it. You know, I want to get a 270 carry subject to how I hit it. Yeah. Which is a big carry for me at normally 262 on a good to average shot. You know, like what we saw inside. There's a good chance I feel like I might be hitting two big ones to try and find a strike. So that's a good hit, isn't it? Yeah, that was good. So that's 272. Your newfound number? Yeah. Let's have a little look at that. So that is 272, 26 spin, 158 ball speed, which is lots for me. Anything over 155, 107 club head speed, I'm normally, you know, I'm getting kind of. 103, 105's tops. Yeah. Also, just look at my up there. Four up. Oh, we didn't look at mine, what was mine? Either? And I'm zero into out and zero face buff. It was just a good shot for me there. 1.48 smash, that's almost max. That's almost as good as I can hit it. So the members have caught us up. So I'm just hitting one shot to see where that's finished. Because as well, I really only have kind of, I'm gonna have one, I mean, I will have a pat pat possibly, but if I keep hitting them like that, that's as straight as I normally hit a drive, that's the only way I'm gonna hit a drive unless I have to hit a soft one for some reason. Really interested to see where they finished. Dan's should be the longest and how his two compare. Mm. We've arrived. We have. And it's very interesting. So let's put some numbers to the numbers you heard here. So this hole is measuring what without slope from where we hit? So 274. And then with slope, it took it up to... So it was up 12, so that put it up to 286. So it's 286. Yeah. Now, 
the green is there and none of our balls so here's my yellow one here there's a white which we'll talk about and there's a white up there so nothing's reached so that means then the launch monitor is wrong is it no so do the maths on mine i was 272 we're quite a bit into wind here now okay so the launch monitor doesn't know the wind doesn't know the wind because we've not programmed that in yeah you're about what 25 yards away yeah so if i'm 25 yards away um and you said it was 284 so you're yeah so it's 284 and i had it 272 so i'm 12 yards there's like there's some yardage so basically the wind and the temperature it's is making that factor. not land up near the bank and yours at 284 basically in theory should have been landing up by pin high mm. so interesting once you take obviously an indoor reading and then you just throw a bit of wind a bit of temperature at it and it like it it's it's a little depressing isn't it well i i mean i could see it as soon as i hit the tee shot i'm thinking i don't i can't see that landing pin high yeah 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 but on the numbers you would expect it to be pin high yeah as it's as it's pitching and then obviously when you get up here it's so it's almost 20, like 25 yard yards short wind basically yeah so this is your 245 carry and how far further has it ended up than your 28 we got like carry? we've literally got 12 paces here so you've gained in roll in this flight 12 paces so you've gained roll on this one and that's carry so out of the two i'm feeling like lots of people are going to think this is a great shot where obviously on a launch monitor this is quite depressing isn't it like you took if you yeah, carry so two four five people are going to be and you are going to be thinking that's not that's not good and, and which is why i made why i decided to go down that road yeah because obviously that's the potential of 284 yeah you put me on the golf course with 284 and that's a big difference from this on the monitor well let's look at the difference on the golf course so dan has had to not hit that bunker and the rough literally starts just here so what's that like 15 20 pace most fairway and it's a very short hole yeah. so it's a very narrow fairway and then he's got a water ditch up the left which he would have been landing level with yeah so this shot requires you to be quite pinpoint precise where that one has flown everything so it takes the hazard out of play and it takes that bunker out yeah. of play doesn't it yeah so in theory the 284 one does have a lot of potential to show you how to start getting stuff out of play you think about a lot of the courses that we go away and play and not necessarily the short ones that i play locally yeah but certainly the longer ones those those bunkers are very well put out there at 270s, 270s they're 265s they're, us, they? they're right for us to catch so we've got to literally feather our way through them um whereas you get me into that game yeah and now i can start getting over those bunkers and then the difference for me so this is my 272 10 paces back is basically where you are so your ball is 10 yards is paces back of me yeah. so again arguably not making a massive difference but I would say again for me I'm taking that bunker out of play by hitting yeah, that you've shot. Carried, you've carried that bunker easily there. Yeah. So interesting isn't it? What I think it's amazing how well that one does because of the difference in height. Mm. It's definitely a shot that you still need to have in the armoury isn't it? Yeah I mean I played, I was saying earlier that I played Lynx Golf last week and that just, it, it gives me another avenue. Yeah. Whereas a lot of guys it's don't weapon, necessarily have it. It's another, it's another yeah. So one player plays all three shots from here which one would you put the money on that the birdie will come from that one okay that one there my my ball on the right hand side Oof. and the only reason for that is purely based on where that pin is situated currently right there then so you're saying that quite confidently i wouldn't put a penny on either of them does that make any sense well, because you've probably because you've got enough green to work with on all of them. Well, because I want to keep my pennies. That's why. Because all three of these have an equal chance. Statistically, you would argue this one's the closest. So it yeah. would have the bigger chance, a bit duffy, to make the birdie. But it's not a big enough gain over that one. Or this one. I would always take get up get up get up get up there you go your pennies might be safe look yeah. let's, let's finish them
So in theory, that one was the closest to the hole, wasn't it? That that one was from the tee shot, definitely, yeah. Not for distance, but distance and line. That was your one for your pennies. Yeah. I mean, subject to lining up and holding apart. Ooh. The closest one to the hole actually made the bogey because again, apart from taking out all the trouble, there wasn't that much difference in those. Nothing would stop me playing the longer one though, as in I would play that shot all the time and constantly I would get closer. Yeah. Right, just measuring up a par three, so we'll apply it to the iron now because I have a very different movement for the iron way. I guess you don't now. You're just going to hit the same swing you've ever hit. Same same shot for me. You're with trying to change a driver attack, so it'd be quite yeah. a good balance from the first where you had two swings, I didn't really. Yeah. Um, what's the yardage? 155. So that's a seven iron. Can you bring a seven and an eight for me? I, I think it's eight for you now. Yeah, well, that's what we'll have a look. Wind off down. I would say it's helping it off the left slightly based on the last time we played. But I reckon, in theory, then this could go long. And what have you got, eight? Yeah. I think you could get it to the back edge. I mean, that pin is somewhat back fractionally. Yeah, so that's kind of middle of the green. We quickly hit a little seven. That's 147 in the air. Which is not bad for my eight. My eight like, is normally more of a 145. Obviously that's no wind or anything. It's like a cutty seven. Smaller shoulder turn. That's 155. Five. Then that's landing right up there. Again, for me, both shots have their point, don't they? That's one four five, a little cutty seven. So one four seven, with like a trying to hit a hard eight. It's got to be the wind. The wind has to have played that factor there. And the temperature. And the temperature. Wind and temperature. So uh, one five five, and I'm coming up three short on the machine. It said no, no slope difference. Eight paces, isn't it, from where you landed? Yeah. So eight, yeah, you've got eight yards. Of temperature change, yeah, and that wind just hurting you slightly. That's yeah, put, that's come to eight yards because that should have landed right here. And obviously. again, that the eight iron is is the equivalent. So they're equivalent to each other. One four seven, one five five. Yeah. So again, for me, it's about having both of those shots in my armory. So where I do, I do want to hit it longer and have the capability. But on this instance, this is such a more gameable shot than me. Because I, I didn't hit that eight brilliant, but I didn't hit it bad. If I hit that slightly wrong, I'm in the front bunker. Yeah. This again, like the last, is taking all the bunkers out of play. Yeah. So on what was interesting is it on one instance for you having the longer carry took all the trouble out of play. Yeah. Second instance for me, the shorter swing, the like the little feely swing, took all the rubbish out of play. Yeah. And this is where launch monitors, stroke indoors, stroke fittings get so lost. I always think. People tend to go in there and just whack one shot. That longest one they can hit. We're not playing that shot all the time. No, we're not. It's good. It's good. This is the beauty of testing, isn't it? Yeah. And getting it not just in the studio, but bringing it onto the golf course. But this is a, this is a swing thing. It's well, you learn so much about like that, yeah, you learn so much about your skill set or not. Yeah. Well, I often think inside you just learn how excited you get when you're brutal it. You know, you're brutalizing everything. Yeah.